Hey, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Christian Yashevsky, and this is uh, Darren Sorrentino. Uh, first, be, before I start, we we're going to talk about the OpenStack Unify CLI, which is a little bit legacy name. OpenStack Client is the, to be more current, it's OpenStack Client. Uh, Darren Sorrentino is uh, distributing a little cheat sheet that we have with the, with the Red Hat that uh, describes some of the new OpenStack Client commands. Uh, we have only a uh, few of them. Uh, we have a couple more left on the, on the desk here, but if you, if you guys uh, want them, they're available at the, at the Red Hat booth. Uh, so, there, so there's definitely more for you to, to grab. And I apologize, uh, we didn't bring more. Uh, to be honest with you, we, we, we didn't expect such an awesome audience here. So, so thank you for, for coming. Uh, so, so before I start, uh, I want to ask uh, how many of you fly or flew American Airlines for the, for the last uh, year? Um, okay, so, so I'm going to make this quick announcement just like American Airlines does uh, before the departure. Uh, so this is, this is your last chance to deplane uh, before the aircraft door is closed. Um, I just want to make sure we're, you're good, in a good place. Thank, thanks. <laughs> thanks for staying. Uh, so, so OpenStack <clears throat> CLI, so I, I don't want to disappoint you guys. We are not the OpenStack uh, client developers. Uh, so what makes us an expert uh, in, this, in this subject? Well, we, we both, first we both uh, worked with OpenStack, used OpenStack for a really long time. And our current role, uh, is OpenStack Architects, uh, and we not only on a daily basis we we operate, troubleshoot, and you know de deploy uh, OpenStack for our customers, but we work with a lot of uh, customers, um, and a bunch of them are, are newcomers to to OpenStack, and and we felt that the OpenStack client or OpenStack by itself is a is not the easiest project for the for the new customers to get into. And we, we felt OpenStack Client is definitely a step in the right direction to bring these, these new guys on board. And, and that's why we, we, we picked this uh, topic to, to talk to you guys. And it, it makes our lives much easier, too. So, so I have another question. How many of you guys consider yourself OpenStack operators? So operate uh, OpenStack on a, on a regular basis. OK, that's, we, we, have a, we have a good, good number of people. So, so one last uh, follow-up question: When you, tr for the guys who operate OpenStack, when you try to list uh, all the instances that you have available, how many of you use uh, Nova list instead of OpenStack server list? Still, okay, all right, good. So you guys definitely in the in the right place. Uh, uh, so, so thanks, thanks for uh, joining in. Uh, so, so who is this uh, session designed for? Who are we? Who did we prepare this for? And I would say mostly the operators, the guys like us who have been working with with OpenStack for quite some time and are used to, you know, the I'll, from now on I will call it the legacy CLI. So your typical Nova, Keystone, and and Glance uh, commands, and. And you guys start seeing the, the error message that I listed here on my screen that some of these commands will start get deprecated or start starting to get deprecated. And you need to, you need to move to this new uh, way of, of uh, executing uh, CLI. Um, and it's, it's not just that, but folks who are trying to, to do more, to take advantage of some new functionality, of the, of the OpenStack client. We're going to talk about those. We're going to talk a little bit about, about uh, basics and principles. And then the second part of this presentation, uh, Darren, my colleague Darren here, is going to give you a really, really awesome uh, use case of, of troubleshooting and reverse engineering on how he learned uh, the OpenStack client. All right, so, so this, these are uh, a few pointers, uh, uh, principles that I want to I wanna go through. What, what can you expect from the from the new OpenStack client, some principles. So first, consistency. If you think about the, as, again, as I will refer it as a legacy CLI, it was not always that consistent. For instance, uh, the examples I brought in uh, before, if you wanted to list instances, you would say uh, Nova list, right? But if you wanted to see the uh, list of images that you have in Glance, 
uh, you would type glance image list. So the, from the command perspective, it was not always that consistent. And for the newcomers especially, uh, that's, that's not a good approach for the, for the CLI. Uh, so OpenStack client uh, simplifies that and, and makes it more consistent. So simplicity is the, is the second biggest principle we, we have. And I already mentioned some of it. Uh, another aspect of simplicity, we're, we're trying to minimize the output that the OpenStack client commands uh, are showing comparable to the, to the legacy CLIs. Um, not only that, but the, the interface or the output and the, and the commands it serve are designed around users more than how the back of backend of the system is created, which, which definitely creates a much better uh, user uh, experience and transparency, uh, so exposed current state of the infrastructure and, and its interaction. So these are some core principles. I pretty much copy them off the uh, OpenStack uh, guidebooks. All right, so, so here I'm going to try to do a little bit uh, comparison between, between legacy CLI and OpenStack clients. I'm, I'm going to start with uh, some command structure, and then I'm going to try to ask some or answer some, some questions that usually folks ask when they switch from one to the other. All right, so, so command structures, um, it is pretty similar with uh, the, I would say the major uh, difference is the, the legacy CLI would start with the uh, with, the, with the OpenStack module, we would have to call the OpenStack module first, then follow with some options like uh, tenant name or, or username, etc., and then command itself, and some, all of the commands had the user different command options. And you, most of you are probably familiar with that. And Nova Boot is, is one of the examples. The, the new OpenStack CLI starts with, is, it's consistency, you can see it right away. It always starts with the word OpenStack, there's a, there's a whole list of global options after that that you can uh, invoke, starting with the similar as we had before with the uh, OS username or, or, or tenant, et cetera. But there's some more, uh, the, new, the new global commands that, that we're going to talk about a little bit later that are quite exciting too and, and will we'll help you improve your, your everyday operation. Uh, then command and some command arguments. Uh, so from, right from here, you can see some benefits and principles that are being applied to the OpenStack client. Uh, one of them, again, all of the commands will start with OpenStack, which is consistent, but also the user uh, design um, approach. Uh, if you think about yourself not knowing about OpenStack anything at all, and that's most like a lot of customers that we're working with, and now we're going to ask you to type uh, Nova boot. Would you ever be able to connect this to actually creating the servers on the OpenStack? And for most of our customers, or most of my customers that I work with, the answer is no. They don't really make this correlation. So, so OpenStack server create much, makes much more better sense, and, and we really appreciate all the work that developers are, are doing uh, here. All right, so, so I'm going to compare these, these two outputs. This is the... Uh, Again, as I call it, legacy CLI, glance image list. Uh, so most of you who used to use OpenStack, you're pretty, or you're still using, are pretty familiar with that. If we compare it to the OpenStack image list, you will see that most of these commands, we're going to lose that dash. Um, and also, the output is, is shortened significantly. And if you think about this command from the, from the user perspective, from the OpenStack consumer, in most cases, he won't be, he won't care about the, you know, disk format and container format and this additional information. So there's definitely another principle we, we see here uh, that's being applied. Uh, but maybe some of us, including ourselves, maybe we, we do need all these additional columns. Um, and so how can we get all of these columns back? So OpenStack client introduced this uh, new flag or, or new options, dash, dash, long. And it's available in, in I think, any, any command of OpenStack client. Uh, it gives you not only the, the information you used to see in a, in a legacy CLI, but it extends that to, you know, to, the, to, to even more. And it can be messy, right? There's, uh, there's some of these uh, commands will output much more information that you would uh, expect. But there's a solution for that, too. Uh, you can use the dash C flag, which, which stands for column, 
and only limit your output to the, to the columns that you're interested in seeing. So if you have any scripts that are taking advantage of the, of the uh, old CLI, and you just want to you wanna, you wanna take advantage of them in the new one, you can definitely make that happen with these uh, dash C parameters. Um, so now the question is, uh, where are all the commands? Do we have all the commands in an OpenStack client? And the answer is uh, yes and no. Um, so, so no, because uh, the, the OpenStack client by itself, it only provides the supports for the, what I call the first class citizens. Uh, so all the projects that are part of most of the installations of the OpenStack, and we, we certainly agree with, with this approach. Uh, so you see compute, identity, image, object storage, block storage, and network. And with network, it's not all the new, uh, the net, Neutron is definitely one of the uh, most growing projects out there, and you're not going to be able to see these new uh, commands like tap as a service or something like that right in the, uh, right in the core. But no problem, there's also a concept of plugin. So if you're using Ironic like we do uh, a lot, or, or Triple O, or, or things like that, there's certainly plugins that will allow you or enable the ability to use OpenStack client uh, as well. All right, so, so a little bit about you know, what format options do we have. I'm going to try to breeze through them, because I have a little bit more exciting stuff later. Uh, so, so format, the, the default one is stable. I didn't have to specify that here. But uh, if you just type OpenStack image list, you will get exactly the same thing. I think everyone is familiar with that. Uh, OpenStack image list with the format CSV for folks who are, you know, maybe want to export this to some sort of spreadsheet uh, format. This is how it's going to look. Uh, there's a JSON format for, for you know, JavaScript programmers, um, HTML. Uh, there's, there's YAML for, for folks like us who, who use, uh, you know, use YAML type of format quite, quite a bit. And then there's also shell, which is a little bit more interesting. Uh, if, you, if you put format shell against any list of the commands, it will most likely fail. Uh, what it does, if you put it against the, any type of show commands, it translates all the output into this, uh, I, would, I would call it close to the bash variable format where you can export it and then use these, these uh, parameters as a, as a variable. So a little caution is if you do that, uh, and you want to just to avoid some collisions with, with your existing uh, environmental vari variables, you can add the prefix to it. And there's a way to do that as well. All right, so, so this, is the, this is the more exciting part for me, since I'm the operator. And I, I want to walk you through. Some of the things we discovered, uh, some of the shortcuts and things that, that we use uh, definitely quite a bit with, when, when working with OpenStack client with our customers. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to start with, uh, with some help. And everyone needs to know how to use help. And, and it's very similar to the legacy CLI, but I want to show you a little bit difference and a, little bit, a few improvements in the, in the space. Um, then I'm going to go over some. Uh, OpenStack complete, so show you how quickly enable auto completion in, uh, with the OpenStack client. Uh, interactive mode, uh, working with multiple, multiple clouds. We, uh, we heard today uh, at the keynotes that you know, more and more deployments are done in the multiple cloud ways. And we certainly see that on, on our end, too, with Red Hat. When, when we design the uh, solutions for our customers, they more often try to add more regions to the mix instead of just you know, creating one monolithic uh, deployment. Um, logging and, debu and debugging, this is probably a feature that I use most when I, when I troubleshoot. There's some improvement then, there, and, and there's, there's a couple more helpful tips. All right, so let me start with the, with the help. Um, the, the help parameter or help command works uh, similarly as it used to. Before, if you just type OpenStack dash dash help, you're going to get a very long listing of everything that OpenStack does in, in the version you, you have installed. Uh, you can, of course, filter it by the, by the command you're, you're interested in. And here's just a, one example of filtering it by uh, looking for all the endpoints. <coughs> and so for the folks that are transitioning and, and moving to the Keystone version 3, uh, there's also a way to force our OpenStack command to display the commands for Keystone version, version 3. 
uh, especially for folks who want to take advantage of some uh, authentication advantages that Keystone version 3 are, are bringing in. Uh, but this is just a quick uh, uh, shortcut on, on how can you do this uh, uh, here from the command itself. Uh, then there's, of course, uh, the, the help for the particular command that you want to see. So you, you start, again, consistency. You start with the OpenStack, then you type help or dash dash help or, or dash h. And then endpoint list is one of the examples, but it's going to be very detailed. It's going to show you uh, everything you need to know to use this, this command. I, I, and, I, and I feel like help uh, with OpenStack is very robust and it's, it's, it's written very well. And it certainly helps our customers to go through all these commands uh, quickly. All right, so this is one of my more favorite features that I, I kind of found uh, when playing with the, with the OpenStack client. OpenStack complete. If you just type this in your, in your, in your shell, in your OpenStack environment, you're going to get text similar to what you see on my, on my screen here. It's going to be much longer, of course. It's going to have uh, a lot of bash-looking uh, um, lines. And what it does, actually, it provides you ability to, to use the autocomplete uh, capability with the, with the OpenStack client. So what you can do now, you can just type OpenStack complete and stream it to your local Bash RC. After that, all you have to do is install Bash uh, completion. And as soon as you do that, you can use the OpenStack tab tab to and and be able to, to, to get you know, some advantage of like auto-completion of commands, but maybe also a quick peek of what's available in the, in the, in the certain commands itself. So definitely a helpful, helpful thing for us. Uh, there's also interactive mode. To get into the interactive mode, you just simply type OpenStack, and then uh, you can just, just start typing the, the commands without the OpenStack in front of it. So there's an example for the for the image list. Uh, uh, so so open st uh, the interactive mode has an auto-completion enabled by, by default. Uh, so you can use the tab tab to see all the uh, commands. And then there's also, you can also script using the, the interactive mode. And, I, and I'm giving you a little example here where I execute two commands in, in, a, in a one swing. So there's another. Uh, tip or trick that, that we, we, you can use with, the, with this uh, new OpenStack client. So this is probably the, my most favorite feature in the OpenStack client again, using, using OpenStack client with the, with the multiple clouds. Uh, so OpenStack supports using this uh, configuration files, clouds, YAML, and you can put it either in the current directory where you're operating from, or in a home directory config OpenStack, or, or in an Etsy OpenStack. And you know, the first one from the top list, so the most local file is going to win uh, whatever you have in this file. And there's also another file called uh, Cloud Public YAML. Um, and this, this file is designed more to store the public cloud information. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a few, uh, through some examples just to show you how how, you know, how, how cool this, this functionality is. Um, so this is one of the files I created. So what we use uh, mostly with being with Red Hat, we use the triple O to deploy uh, infrastructure for, for ourselves and for, for our customers. So the triple O concept, for, you, for those of you guys who are not familiar, you deploying OpenStack from the OpenStack. Um, so automatic, automatically, every single customer we work with have at least two clouds that you need to manage. There is an under cloud and there is an over cloud. Uh, so what I did over here, I created this, uh, this file that specify my credentials for the, for the under cloud. And I also separated my over cloud, so my actually production uh, cloud, into the tenant roles, right? So I have, a, I have one over cloud for my admin and one over cloud for my, for my tenant one that I, that I used. And this is one way of doing it. You don't have to specify tenant, every tenant out there. I, I find this, this works a little bit better for me, but you could, you could specify user on a, on a line uh, itself. 
Uh, and there's another example here on the, on the right. It adds, if you, have a, if you have a public cloud that you want to add to the mix, you can do that too, uh, as I show, show on the right in the, in the public cloud section. So now execution, all I have to do is add this one parameter, uh, OS, and the name of the cloud that you want to e execute it against it. So now if I type server list against the under cloud, it's going to show me my instances running under under cloud. But if I do it with the over cloud, even if it's the same, uh, the same place, I'm going to have, uh, I'm gonna have output for, from another cloud. So definitely a big improvement uh, from, the, from the usability perspective. <coughs> and this, this statement at the bottom, uh, it's in Catalan, means amazing. But the, so I first learned this, this means amazing, but then I learned it can be good amazing or bad amazing. So I, I think it's more like good amazing. Um, so logging and debugging, uh, if you're an operator, you probably use that quite a bit. There's a dash dash debug and dash dash log file that, that we typically use. Uh, with the cloud's YAML file, you can include the two more parameters, log file and log level. And, and from there, you, you no longer have to put the dash dash debug and dash dash log file every time you execute the commands. I think that's quite helpful too if you're in a stage of troubleshooting, if you have any problems and you just want to uh, get things going quicker. I always forget to add dash 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 debug and then going back to, the, to find all my outputs is, is uh, usually a problem too. So I think this is another really great uh, improvement. And, the last one before I turn it to, to Darren, it's very simple. Uh, I, I kind of use that too. I just create a little alias for OpenStack, um, and I make it uh, OS directed to the bash. And then instead of typing OpenStack every time, I can just type OS an image list, for instance. Uh, with that, I want to turn it to Darren, who's going to have a more exciting part of the presentation. Thanks. All right. Um, so yeah, Chris went over the syntax of uh, the commands here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the framework and uh, what I listed here as a deep dive, which is probably uh, more accurately would be reverse engineering. Um, so when they went to go design the uh, OpenStack client, they needed to come up with something that was uh, rigid yet flexible. They wanted something to provide the consistency on the input and the output, uh, as seen uh, on Chris's slides. Um, but they also need something flexible because, as you all know, OpenStack changes over time. Uh, the existing projects add additional commands. Uh, additional projects come uh, underneath the Big Tent infrastructure. And I mean, we even move from the integrated platform to the Big Tent model. Um, so there's constantly uh, new things going. And they wanted some kind of client that would be adaptable so that you could learn it once and it would be uh, consistent regardless of what projects you added to it. So these goals here, um, they, when they came up with the client, they, they said, uh, uh, a list of goals that they wanted to accomplish. Uh, the consistent naming uh, structure, it was, Chris covered all that. Um, actually, he covered most of all this stuff. Um, the, the one thing that um, he mentioned there was about the shell, is that uh, the single binary approach, it allows you to start up the shell. It'll authenticate the first time, and then after that, you can issue multiple commands against your cloud, and you don't have to authenticate every time you're uh, actually running the commands. So that was one of the um, key things. Uh, as well as they wanted to utilize the Python API libraries. They didn't want to reinvent the wheel or um, redo things. They wanted to uh, use what we had and what didn't exist uh, code for that. So the, uh, they leveraged this thing called uh, CLIF, the Command Line uh, Interface Formulation Framework. Um, it's the, the, the whole design of the CLIF framework is to give you multiple layers. Uh, so you have the OpenStack command, which is your, your binary, uh, all of the global options go immediately after that, such as the OS cloud that Chris showed in his previous slide, uh, followed by a command. Um, they needed something that was capable of dy uh, dynamic uh, loading of the code, uh, so that allows them to add additional projects or change uh, existing projects code. Uh, so they also use, they utilize the setup, ut setup tools uh, in Python, which allows them to use an entry points text file, um, which is what we're going to dig down into uh, in the next couple slides. So this is my disclaimer slide. I am not a Python programmer. Um, I basically, what you're going to see in the next couple slides is me 
trying to adopt the uh, unified CLI because it's the new greatest thing and everyone says we should use it. And um, as you can see with Keystone, you start using all these other things, you start getting the deprecated messages and stuff. So um, the next couple slides is my approach to actually learning the OpenStack tool. Hopefully it'll be somewhat exciting and help you uh, under also understand it. It's, it's more from the perspective of an of a end user. Um, and when I was younger, I used to do a lot of uh, reverse engineering of assembly code, a lot of op code changes from 74 to 75. So that's the kind of perspective I took on uh, learning the OpenStack client. So in the, the way I really learned it is I actually had a problem with the OpenStack client. Uh, it was broken. So the problem I ran into was with the OpenStack flavor delete command. Uh, so as you can see here, I, here I am all happy using my OpenStack unified CLI to create my flavor, to list my flavors, create my flavors, list it, there it is. Now I want to get rid of it. And when I went to go get rid of it, now all of a sudden I get this odd message, public endpoint for messaging service not found. Um, fortunately, with the OpenStack unified CLI, even though you have that, the old commands still work. So when I was on the customer site and ran into this, Nova Flavor Delete came to my rescue, uh, and I put this on the back burner and figured I'd come back later and try to figure out what's going on. So when I finally did come back to this later, uh, I did look up a little bit online and read about Cliff and how that worked. Um, and then I wanted to see, I, I, I'm the type of person that needs to see it and see, work, at, work directly back through how things work. So first thing I needed to do was figure out where the OpenStack binary was. Um, so I figured out which one I was using, used yum, uh, used yum to determine what package it was in. Then I started looking at the package. And I noticed the package was under the site packages with the OpenStack, uh, OpenStack client. So once I went into that directory, I uh, listed the directory. So just, again, just trying to figure this whole thing out. I, know, I started to notice that there's directories here for all of the different aspects, the project, the core projects within OpenStack. So, and then from what I read on Cliff, I knew that there was an entry points file somewhere. So I, this is me basically looking for the entry points file. So then I pulled up the entry point file and looked at it. And the entry points file has a, a number of, uh, of sections that all begin with OpenStack dot and then one of the project names. Underneath that are all of these things, which uh, I guess are, which would be the entry points. So at this point, I started to look at this and I, I wanted to take a simple command that I knew for that OpenStack and I knew worked. So what I wound up doing was I took the host list command here because the output of the host list command shows your hypervisors. I wanted something simple, again, not, being, not knowing Python or anything, just trying to figure out how this thing works. So I looked at the host list command, and here's, uh, here's where I executed Nova host list, as well as the host list in the OpenStack, uh, using the OpenStack unified CLI. And the output is ident identical, uh, and it actually worked. So I, I figured I would use this as a basis to try to feel how the code works uh, in, in regards to the unified CLI. So I went back over here and I'm, I was looking at it. The one thing I noticed is that when I did OpenStack host list, a, there was a space there. So I started to make the correlation here that host underscore list is the exact same thing. They basically took the space and replaced it with the underscore. So you got the host show, you have host list. So I started to see a, a pattern here. But then I, I was trying to figure out what this was. But the directory I was in was actually called OpenStack client. And they all had, so they had subdirectories in there for the various, uh, for the various projects within OpenStack. So I just started to put two and two together and took a look and sure enough, there was a host.python file which matched what was in the entry points file. So that left me with this part here. So which, so which is the, which ones are actually being the class. We'll take a look at that in a, in a minute. Um, so I took what I knew here on the host list and applied it back to uh, my, the flavor delete. So here's the flavor delete pointing to the uh, OpenStack compute client flavor, um, delete flavor. So in this directory, there's uh, three files that are called flavor. The first file is the Python code. The second file is the compiled Python code. And the third flavor is the optimized Python code. 
Google explain that to me. Um, so this is, uh, so when I looked in this file, I took a look at the flavor.py file, and this is the class for the delete flavor. Again, I have no idea what this is actually doing because I don't know Python. However, so being reverse engineer trying to get, trying to get a feel for the code, I can tell that there's two functions defined here. There's this get parser and take action. So I started to think, okay, so if this is broken, maybe I can compare it to something else that, that actually works. So I went over, this is kind of an eye chart, but um, perhaps you can see this. All, the slides will be made available after um, on OpenStack.org. So, but I, I looked over here at the show flavor class. And in the show flavor class, again, I see get parser, take action. Uh, and show flavor works. Uh, flavor, sh uh, flavor show works, which it's, co the, it's called flavor show, but the class is show flavor. Um, so the consistency is on the input and output, not necessarily the code, I guess. <laughs> so, so, um, so I knew this worked, so I compared the two, and they both seem to have pretty much the same contents. So I started to think, it's like, Sometimes I take, you have to take a step back from the problem in order to figure out what, what's actually going on here. So we know the OpenStack syntax, where it has OpenStack, the global commands and the commands. We know my pro problematic command is my flavor delete. Uh, the entry points file it appears to have a section name that deals directly with the project that, it, the, project that it's, uh, the commands are for, has an entry point which points to a file that has the code and the class that it needs to execute. Um, so, our, so the, and like I said, the entry point seems to be um, the command with the space uh, replaced with the underscore. That is an eye chart. So when you execute the uh, OpenStack help, I looked there to try to get a better idea, but one thing that stood out to me was, so I knew I had in the directory, I had commands for compute, identity, object, block, but what's interesting here is I started to see bare metal. I started to see all these other things in here that weren't pertaining to those specific projects. So, so that got me thinking. If there's additional commands that you can follow OpenStack with, there's got to be something else that it's using to, to get those command lists. So I went back to the site packages directory, and I looked for all files with that, that were entry points files, and there's 81 of them. So I really didn't feel like trying to sift through them, so I started thinking, okay, well, what I'll do is I'll just look for the ones that have OpenStack uh, sections within them, because those would be relevant to what, what's going on. And sure enough, there's a set of six of them that come back. The OpenStack client, heat client, ironic inspector, triple O. So that, gave, that started me thinking, so the, all of these other entry point files are extending the OpenStack client. Uh, by adding additional entry points to it. So in thinking about this, though, it's like, well, when we do OpenStack uh, server list, there's nothing in there that says it's for the compute service. It's just OpenStack server list. So how does it know that server list entry point, server underscore list, is part of just for compute? What if the names, the entry points have to be unique across all of them. And what if there was another entry point that was delete flavor? So I asked, I, uh, that, so with thinking that, I said, well, what if the entry points must be unique? So I looked for flavor delete entry point. And sure enough, it's not only an OpenStack client as a core, it's also in, there's a car client. So I took a look at the uh, Zakar client entry point file. And you can see here OpenStack messaging, and it has all of these entry points here. And what's interesting is that most of them start with Q because it has to do with messaging, except for pool create and flavor delete. Um, they kind of stand out there as uh, odd oddities there. So I, now I had this theory that maybe the entry points need to be unique. So once you have a theory, you have to test it. So what I did was, I, of course, backed up the text file because I, I wasn't sure if I was going to break my environment. Uh, so then I, I, what I did was I changed flavor delete to just Zach flavor delete. I didn't know what that would break or what that would do. I just wanted to get that out of the picture when I actually ran my flavor delete. So once I did that, 
I actually was able to run the flavor delete Barcelona, and sure enough, it worked. So, so that told me that the entry points must be unique across all, uh, across all projects that are uh, utilizing this. So before I go over uh, what we learned, what the, the other interesting thing that it's, it, it's kind of ironic because they came up with the OpenStack client uh, in order to simplify the end user's lives so that it's consistent uh, and repeatable and stuff. But in doing that, one of the things using Cliff is that now the developers need to be cognizant of the entry points of all these other packages, and they need to work together. So, so in one way, it simplified things for the end users. In another way, it complicated things for the developers now. So they, they need to basically work together and ensure that no one steps on other people's codes as they develop for the OpenStack Unified CLI. Um, so basically, this is a brief summary of uh, what we went over. Um, OpenStack client comes with the uh, built-in, like baked-in uh, commands for the core project set. Uh, we've covered the overall syntax of using uh, the OpenStack client. Um, talked about the general uh, syntax of the entry points txt file uh, and how to basically find what that code is and take a look at it. Um, talked about uh, that any project can extend the OpenStack client by uh, adding its own entry points into the mix. Uh, entry points, uh, the endpoints appear to be just a direct correlation of the arguments you pass to the OpenStack client, uh, replacing a, the space with an underscore, and uh, all entry points definitions must be unique. Um, just a uh, side note, I did go back and rename the Zakar thing, and there is a bugzilla open on uh, that actual, that is an actual bug. So hopefully that will be uh, fixed uh, sometime soon. So that uh, wraps things up for um, my section. Um, do we have any questions? Sure. Yeah, so the, the, core, the core projects, the gaps are, I would say the gaps are very, very small. Uh, and if they do exist, they exist more as bugs such as this, because uh, this is a Nova command. Um, for, the, for the projects outside of the core set, they fall, up, they fall upon each of the, uh, the, project lead, the projects to, to come up with the command sets for them. Um, they're, slowly, they're slowly moving away from, uh, I mean, everybody wants to move away from using just the project names to the, to, the, to the OpenStack client. But just like any of the projects within OpenStack, it, it takes time. Even though, even though they moved uh, to the Big Ten model, the, the, the code still has to mature over time. So just like any other project within OpenStack, it's going to probably take a couple cycles for it to be, uh, one, widely adopted, and two, uh, the direct equivalent of what you can do with the project, uh, the project commands. Yeah, and just to add to that, um, I think um, when I ask initially how many people, even in this room, still use Nova list instead of uh, you know OpenStack uh, server list, and a lot of us still raise the hand. And I think it's for the for the old school uh, OpenStack guys, it's imprinted in our head. It just automatically we we still do that. So I think the way for, for, for the community and for the users to, to move forward, the OpenStack client, is to give them more benefits that will you know, get the buy-in for them to actually move to, the, to this new way, right? And I think, I think we are going in the right direction with, the, with some of the features we showed up. But if we can add more benefits from the operation perspective to motivate these guys to move on to it, it, it will be definitely better. Right. 
Yeah, that, well, documentation historically in OpenStack has always been somewhat, I mean, no one wants to do documentation. So, uh, I mean, it, it, so it's not just that, it's not just that. I mean, if you look at some of the documentation for some of the other projects and stuff, it's not there. It's, it's, it's going through the same pain points that all the other projects go through. So it'll get there. Um, I mean, when we're actively uh, working in, uh, on helping get that fixed. Good question, thank you. Any other questions? All right, well, uh, thank you all for coming. Um, Nick, next slide, I just have a couple other sessions that are uh, supported by uh, Red Hat for today. Um, we have that slide there and that slide, but you guys all have the mobile app, so it's probably better than my slides. So. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.